I was just checked out. Hi, everybody. Hello, Bill. Is that the new business? Well, there was some business there. Uh, welcome to the July meeting. Sorry we got delayed there a little bit. But, uh, I decided to take a little rest there. Do you have anybody here who's here for the first time and would like to introduce themselves? Hi, I'm Chris. I just came out to the bar in the dating area last couple weeks ago. It was my first time. Okay. Well, we do not normally have just kind of a dissertation by the fire department. So, so welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, anybody else? My name is Mary Joe Havlicek, and I've always been interested in the stars and the sky and everything else. And I was mainly interested in Mars, and I thought, well, surely there would be somebody here who's been watching Mars. Very good. We're glad you're here. Uh, let's see. Has anybody been down to Astro Park, our deep sky site? Two over here. Mark made an like crazy, probably. Uh, let's see. Let's start with the secretary's reading of the previous meeting minutes. Hi. Let me tell you that we met here June 3rd. We had 65 people here and seven guests. Um, and then I read the main minutes. Our treasurer told us that we had. Uh, $973 come in, mostly dues and donations, and $974 go out paying the International Dark Sky Association dues and astronomical dues and loaning and outreach expenses, program expenses. Our treasurer told us we had $6,728. Um, our vice president says we have not been able to be observed in seconds. Um, our awards coordinator told us we had two awards to give out. We had Chuck Jedley, earned the Orange Award, Basic and Zella Devils, and Louis Dorland earned the Bronze Level of Radio Astronomy Program. Our telescope coordinator told us that both tended to have Sony and telescopes are out, and the others are available at this time. Our observing chair, Monali well, couldn't be here, but it was read by Louis. She told, he told us uh, Saturn is in opposition. Third, so we stay in good position with you all night. I think Mars just was at opposition in May, and Jupiter still in good position, but it's set by about 2 a.m. Also, the sun solstice happened June 20th, uh, when the sun is known as Cancer. Um, we had the several upcoming star parties June 14th, Johnny and Sparks, probably where we saw you, and Friday, June 10th. Mahoney Star Party out at Mahoney State Park. And we still have one upcoming Friday, August 28th at Splattery Vineyards, the Wine Stars. Let's see, we had a new telescope donated, and uh, we also talked a little about the Nebraska Star Party, July 31st through August 5th. Um, we had a couple of cool time things. Uh, John Johnson is he's Skinner, Keith Skinner shares some useful apps about how to tell which pictures of Mars that my society might be looking at right now, called Sky Portal. He let us know about his sun pattern that Anna Lemma is creating his driveway after it's finished. Mm -hmm. I can ask him about it. He's not here yet? No, he's not no, here tonight. He'll be at NSP. And our program was about the Herschel. By Janine Shane. It was called Musical Maestros to Celestial Celebrities. And it was a terrific program. Did anybody have any other questions about what happened in June? Nope. There is no. Oh, anybody have any corrections or additions to that? I would ask for a motion to accept the minutes as read. Thank you, Don. I'll put you down there for a second. 
a motion and second to accept the minutes as read. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Passes. And your treasurer's report. <coughs> Well, we started uh, June with $6,821.96. We took in $201.99 in dues and had no expenses. And that left us a balance of $7,023.95. And uh, I am not going to run for treasurer next year. I will be in New Mexico for four months. So I don't think it's fair to the club that I'm gone for four months and be the treasurer. So, let everyone know. Thank you. Yeah. So if anyone is interested in the job, I would be glad to help them get started in the next several months. When would the uh, elections be in October? Okay, so we need a treasurer for this next year. So if you're interested in that. Uh, benefits of being a member of the Omaha Astronomical Society, there are a couple that are really pretty nice. Uh, you become a member of the Astronomical League, uh, which gets you their magazine and reflection. They are reflecting all the There's one. It's uh, a quarterly publication with a lot of good information in it. Uh, you have access to Astro Park, which is our deep sky observing site. So if you want to get out there and use a telescope or um, see if there's anything going out there, uh, you have that. We have a telescope loan program. So if you don't have a telescope and you're interested in finding out if you want to get a telescope, which kind of works best for you, you can try them before you buy them. Then you also get our newsletter on a monthly basis. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Officer of Force Vice President. I haven't been down there, data has round up all of this. So we should How is everything going down there? I mean, is it, is it pretty bad with weeds? No, I got rid of the fences and I sprayed around the buildings. So okay. Should be. Okay, the fences are pretty much. No, they should be gone. Okay, so they weren't a problem like they were two years ago. There's still quite a few. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Okay. 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 Uh, let's see. Awards chair. Steve's not here. Observing chair. Mm -hmm. New awards. Oh, I'm sorry. Observing. I understand the confusion. <laughs> 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 the supplies we could possibly see eight planets by the end of the month, and I know what Louis is going to say. And what about the Earth? But then Pluto's not a planet, so <laughs> what's this way? Mostly Mercury <laughs> and Venus uh, in the western sky. Mostly towards the end of the month and close to the horizon. You probably have to track it up in the night. See what you're actually looking at. We still have Mars and Saturn that you should be able to see. And Pluto is in Sagittarius, you mean the telescope speaks to Mars. And it's that opposition on 717, so you should be able to see it. Uh, Neptune and Uranus, both. Uh, almost <coughs> just before midnight and around midnight, and then mostly in the morning skies. What about the Aries and the What about our sun? The dwarf planet. 
I'm not sure that I actually can look at those. But to be able to see. Are they able to see those like that? Well, do you Comrades, I thought this was just interesting. I'm not sure that it's mostly early July. It's actually pretty south. You would need binoculars or a small telescope to see this. Um, south of Scorpius, it's really close to the horizon. I think you have to be more the southern hemisphere. Meteor showers again, these were the only ones that I could find for the southern delta aquarium. Again, better seen in the southern hemisphere, but it peaks around the end of the month and mostly around 3 a.m. And they are the remnants of these two comets. And I mentioned the first days only because I think we're not meeting before August 12th for next month. And that just would be the night to see it before dawn. And I think we actually need that in and just a little bit about the moon. The moon was July 4th and four minutes July 6th. Thank you, Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, my confusion was I was reading the newsletter, but I know most of you probably haven't seen it. And I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I did get to it. Okay, uh, another mistake we made months ago was we, we scheduled the first night of the Mahoney Star Party for this month on the same night as our rescheduled astronomy club. But apparently, the weather guys, uh, weather guys were in favor of not us going out to Mahoney. So it's cloudy tonight, so we'll try again tomorrow night from the home. Weather report, can you look better tomorrow night? Yeah. Hard to say. Is it? Oh, okay. Well, if you don't have anything else to do, and it's clear, come out to uh, the Mahoney State Park. It's going to be a great time out there. Um, now we got it also another double up next week uh, with uh, our usual Tuesday night astronomy over at Lake Zarensky Park. Um, if, uh, in the newsletter, if you see it, the, the next item on that page, page four of the events calendar, was uh, Camp Cedars. Um, as you know, um, or most of you know, Mike Gallagher is very involved with uh, the Boy Scout organization in the area, and uh, he takes it upon himself to go out there every week. They're camping out there in the summer uh, out of Camp Cedars, southwest of Fremont, and uh, puts on an astronomy program. He drags out about four or five telescopes. Um, you know, very modestly once in a while we'll ask for help, but usually one of those weeks he takes his own scout troop and camps out somewhere else. So next week is that week, and so that same night, Tuesday night, uh, he's asking for help. Uh, I, I will be out there, so Louis, if you want to take charge of Zerensky, I'll take charge of leading the charge out of the Camp Cedars. Uh, typically what goes on is, um, and I'll, I'll do a little indoor program, of, about 7.30 to 8.30, 9, and then we get set up. Of course, you really can't see much. The planets start popping out around, you know, maybe 9, 20, 9, 30. And we're there until maybe 11. Yeah, but it just, uh, it's, you know, one of their requirements uh, for the Australian Merit Badge is to, uh, to attend an, an official observing event. And so that's what they, you know, classify as their observing, or at least parts of or part of So anyway. If any of you can let me know uh, if you can be out to uh, Camp Cedars, then I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, I'll send out my usual spam email to everybody, just to remind them. Uh, the only thing this year now, too, like everywhere you go anymore, uh, more tightened up security. So if, when you drive into the camp, you have to stop at the camp office, which is pretty obvious that you get through with where all the cars are. And you not only have to register, but they give you a little next thing like this that says you're a visitor. So, and then you can drive on back to the uh, 
the main lodge. I'll, I'll put that all in the email too. So that's what's going on next Tuesday. And if, if you don't want to drive all the way out to Camp Cedars, then uh, help Louie out over at the Lake Sorensky. I mean, it's, all this is predicated at the employer, of course. Now, the mistake I made. The next item on the calendar is uh, down at the Platte River State Park on not July 21st, but July 22nd. Saturday night, the 27th. And this was uh, Doug Wells, which I don't know if, I think he had something else to keep him from coming on uh, the nights of our uh, meetings, but uh, he's helped me out a couple times with uh, outreach events. He actually works down there at the Flight River State Park, and he's kind of taken on himself to organize this. Now, the, the extra sheet in the newsletter that I had uh, Sean put in had the right day, you know, July 22nd, from 9 to 11, and, and I'll get a little more detailed map out to everybody. Uh, there again, if you're not up doing anything else uh, that Saturday night, it's clear, come on out to the Flight River State Park. We'll have, yeah, that, no, it's Saturday, or Saturday the 27th. So disregard the, the, the page in the uh, in the newsletter and look at the, the other little flyer. And that's what I was all confused here, which happens more and more. It seems like it's a huge thing. Saturday. 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 Oh, I'm really, th th see, I just looked at that and I thought, oh, I, must, I didn't even look at the calendar. Thank you, Kim. So it's Saturday the 22nd. I think we better just stop and I'll have to regroup and make sure. <laughs> He didn't put, he just put the date. Oh, he put 27. He put 27. Oh, be so it's Friday night. Okay. Friday night, the 22nd. Thank you, Kim, for looking at your calendar. I hadn't even bothered to look at the calendar. So, okay. sorry about that. So, we'll go through again. It'll be Friday night, the 22nd. So it's halfway right in the, uh, the list of events. Then. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, Friday night the 22nd, and that's technically it for uh, July. Um, we already alluded to in the minutes. You know, we'll, we do have the, the slattery finish states mine tasting um, in August, but I'll bring that up at the August meeting. Okay, look at the calendar again. So what is what is our meeting date in August? We'll, Friday the 12th. Friday the 12th. Okay. I'm not going to go any further. <laughs> any, any other questions? Can I confuse you anymore? <laughs> not my day. Um, it's as you drive in around to the to the left. But I'll I'll have it. He sent a little map. A little JPEG file map I'll put in the email when I finally get it straightened out. Apologize again for. So, anything else? Any other questions? If anybody wants to help with these outreaches and you haven't been getting the emails, give your email. Yeah, if, so if you're you not on my email, email list. list. I mean, <laughs> when was slaughtering again? August 26th. Yeah. Right. That's next one. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Sorry about that. No. Well, uh, myself. Telescope binocular loans. The only two things out at this point for December four inch refractor and the solar telescope. Everything else is available. Although I should say that I've got uh, one member of this business and I get 13 plus dogs for the sitting there and set up this thing that was back at. Some of the others are at our front our house, the other stuff on the last person of all of them. The ones I have is uh, I just need a few hours to uh, give it to you. Uh, I'm 
Program chair. Tonight we're going to have a wonderful program by Sonali. I'm looking forward to it, talking about orbits and, uh, and everything involved in that. So, looking good for the rest of the year, too. Very good. Let's see. I am not aware of any unfinished business, but I was not here last month. Did we end up with any business that was looking for us to talk about? Okay. Does anybody have any new business? Yeah. Uh, I've been in contact with the people that are running the gate experiment. I saw some locations open, so she asked if I could bring it up at the meeting. Yeah, you want to talk about that now? Because I've also got some information about my uh, trip down to the Israel. Uh, that'll cover that a little bit too. But if you want to go ahead and talk about it, go right ahead. Come on, you want to come on down? Sure. So, for anyone that doesn't know, the Kate experiment is a citizen science experiment that they're expecting to do next year for the solar eclipse. The idea is they want to place some um, astrophotography stations every 60 miles along the path of the totality all the way across the U.S. So they want to record totality for roughly an hour and a half to be able to do some science with being able to see the outer corona of the sun. Um, they're looking for volunteers. The hope is that when the experiment is over, they'll be able to pass the equipment onto the volunteers so that they can keep it. They're also hoping that the volunteers will work in pairs in case there's any issues with family sickness or um, family emergencies, that kind of thing. They're also hoping the partners will figure out who's going to keep the equipment and not. <laughs> uh, they hope that the equipment will be used again in future experiments. And right now, they have four locations left over, left open in Nebraska. There's Stapleton, which is about 30 minutes north of North Platte. Broken Bow, which is about 15 minutes north of Lexington. Uh, Ravenna, which is 37 minutes west of Grand Island. And Geneva, that's 27 minutes south of York. Uh, the contact is Mariana Lazarova. And I've got our contact information. I've printed up several sheets that I'll have back at the back. In case anybody has any interest in it, wants to contact me. That's it. Any other questions? You would just need to find your own location in those towns. Right. So what I did is I just contacted her and said, hey, I'm, I'm interested in helping out. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to be in a location in this kind of area. I wanted to stay somewhere between here and Grand Island. Mm -hmm. And she let me know the locations. And then the, the place you would actually be at isn't at that location. That's just the biggest town that would probably have a hotel nearby. Okay. So like, uh, I picked Aurora. And she said, well, the location is probably going to be about 20 minutes away from Aurora. But that's the closest place you can probably get to tell. And, and that was pretty much it. Now, they haven't been completely funded yet. They're only about 75% funded. But Celestron did offer to donate all of the mounts, which are going to be equatorial mounts of the clock drive. And they have the telescopes so far um, promised. They're still looking for cameras. They want to get laptops for everybody. And they need to get the solar filters for everybody. But they've got five corporate sponsors now. Um, NASA got giving them some grant money too. So they're closed. They're just not quite there. But if you're in an area that ends up being cloudy, they still want you to stay there. And they were actually they were actually really big about that. They're like, even if it looks like you're going to miss it, we still want you set up. We still want you recording just in case you happen to get a clear <coughs> clear spot. So, so they've already pre-selected all that stuff. They've already pre-selected all the sites to the point of the general area. They haven't actually pre-selected the specific site they want you to set up. That's, that's, yeah, it does sound like it's going to be that specific. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they actually have uh, several websites set up. Um, if you look for K-Experiment, C-A-T-E, 
you'll probably be able to come across several of them. And one of them, I actually printed out the, they're still going through the, uh, the setup instructions. They're practicing on several other eclipses that are happening in other places in the world so that they can kind of fine tune what the instructions are going to be. The specific equipment that they have, they haven't purchased it all yet, so they're running a prototype setup right now. Uh, they're looking for an F7 refractor. Is what they plan on. They they have very they have very specific um, statistics that they want, parameters that they want for each scope because they want the size of the sun image to fit exactly in the camera. I thought Magnus had already said that they were going to donate the telescopes and the filters. Maybe they had the other filters too. I, I knew that they had the telescopes. Okay. Any other questions? Sure. I have a friend that actually lives in Brooklyn Bow and told me that he'll be watching the eclipse in his backyard. Would he have to move to their their place if he's going to find that? It sounds like they it sounds like they're extremely specific on where they want to go. GPS location. Yeah, this is this is one of their websites, and then they also have a Facebook page, and I found another page that looked like it was dedicated more to media. And if you dig a little bit deeper, you can actually find their like their proposal, their experiment proposal, specifically the science that they want to accomplish. Yeah. Any other questions? Did you have a question? No? OK. All right. Thanks, guys. If you have any, uh, want their contact information, I'll get back here. Thank you, Bob. Uh, let's see. Is there any other new business? Okay. Upcoming. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at Burgundy actually. Well,
Okay, uh, the only in, up, important upcoming dates that I have are MSP, July 31st, August 5th. You want to talk about it real quick? Real quick, yeah. Uh, we do have a few brochures, thankfully, we got the last ones out. Um, and uh, they're right up here, you guys, if you are familiar with it. Um, if you're not familiar with it, by the way, I have a lot of people going to do that for I've registered a lot of you folks. So, so anyway, uh, you guys, it's a great time. Um, we work for uh, Marshall Week for a whole week, and what is really interesting is this, that if you enjoy your telescope, even at Weeping Water and other places, even around time in the backyard, your telescope's going to be larger than the rest of the The reason why is it's just very, very dark sky. And so uh, that's, that's a huge draw. Uh, for a lot of us that go up there, and it's just a great time for me. It's just been for many years, just down the people to see your uh, uh, friends that have come back from around the country. And it's a great time to look at the universe, and it is just spectacular. Up there. I just can't tell you. And if you read my article in the Stella, I, I finally uh, did it for you folks that are going to go up to the uh, star party. But just with your naked eye, you can see an awful lot of celestial objects. And, uh, and I talked about the uh, treasures in the uh, Sagittarius Arm of the Galaxy. And also, I said, uh, especially uh, how to find the, the wonderful Hercules uh, God cluster with us. You can see a catalog of 1013. You can actually see that. They're an absolute problem. And by the way, if you can't see those things, you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, what's that? We'll come back at night. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you if you're interested, you guys, uh, you don't have to go the whole week, but there are brochures here, and uh, if you have, have questions, you know, I'll talk to you. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I'm going to Eric. Let's see. We have a, I guess, a couple of those short presentations for tool time. Uh, you want to start off, Chuck? Solar eclipse. And, uh, my team is key mass astronomy. This is my This film uh, at the Star Party, door prize. And so I took the bucket, packed it off, and, and took a couple pieces of wood, stacked them on top of each other, take the jigsaw, cut them in the same sh shape. So I put the film in between two pieces of wood, screwed it all together. Oh! <laughs> 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 two notches on this silk. Yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> how, how do you figure that out? Do you read it online or just experimenting? Just experimenting. <laughs> Looking for something that was about this size. Happened to find it on the end of your telescope? Yeah, just plug it on the end of your telescope. Now, where would it go to? It is, is this a light bucket? <laughs> <laughs> it's a light ladle. <laughs> Well, the nice thing about this with the go-to tools, and uh, <laughs> I use the solar system align feature, which basically is just one point in the sky. Now, level the scope, point it at the sun with this thing on it, align the scope on the sun, and I'll choose something else, like Jupiter, or whatever it happens to be, uh, have it go to it, and then very carefully peel this thing off and look at Jupiter in daytime. 
I've actually seen six planets in the daytime with my scope. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything from Saturn to Jupiter strikes are visible. It's quite a quite remarkable. Yeah. Earth. <laughs> it was a little low on the horizon. I was looking for Jupiter. And <laughs> so Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And the moon and Saturn. But, uh, really, all you can see with, the, with this and the sun is sunspots. You can't see solar flares or anything, but it's still pretty good view. And this would be a girl that would go during the solar eclipse. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be using this during the solar eclipse night here in the Okay, now the other thing is also in the same theme with cheap. But when you're looking at a scope for long periods of time, I don't know about you, but I tend to start wobbling around and cannot keep my head still. So I have a very low tech, they don't get much lower. Cambridge stabilizer. This used to be a shovel handle. <laughs> <laughs> it forms a tripod. And you would not believe what a difference that makes. Uh, it stabilizes your head and you don't move around and you see a whole lot better. Just by putting it somewhere. <laughs> okay. Any questions on the Omaha. <laughs> This film is a uh, solar filter. Uh, <laughs> I don't know exactly what, what it's called. It's just a. You want to start part? Seymour Solar. S E Y M O U R Solar. We're out of Utah. And uh, they, they make some excellent solar viewing products. They have sizes and glasses. They actually make commercially made filters that you can buy. Of course, that's a lot less expensive. This is, yeah, the plus you. One thing I do do, though, every time I use this thing, is I look at the sun with it this way. And if I can see even the lightest, slightest speck of light in this thing ever, I throw it away. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah. Yes? Um, let's see. Uh, can I bring, can I, uh, I think I know what you're talking about even more uh, <laughs> A long stick you find on the ground. Oh, as long as it's sturdy. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have the yeah. high-tech yeah. handle. <laughs> but you're right. Anybody who informed me, you know, we may evolve a third leg, and then we won't need that. What color is the sun in your scope? Uh, it's sort of a dark yellow. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've blown it up to the 300X, you know. Times. Well, it's really neat, Chuck, is that you can find the planet during the afternoon or the morning. The it's not 100%, uh, because you're only using one point. It's not extremely accurate on the alignment, but you use a low magnification. If you can find it, then you've got a second point, and then it gets a lot easier to find it. You just never find better than the sun without Not even if you're over there. When you find the planet, does that allow you to put it in the collection factor? To it allows you to use it, add it as an alignment point yeah. after the fact. <laughs> yeah, with, with the one point alignment, it's counting on you having that base absolutely perfectly level. Yes, it is. And of course, the exact time in your exact latitude you want to do. But if you get that second point, then, then you're it's done. easier. Yeah. Well, latitude and longitude, anybody else need for it, it's uh, pretty full now. Yeah. And then once you find it, let's say we're going to find it, that's your plan. Right. That becomes the one that's going in there. Now you're still going to be a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And any other questions for Chuck? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a uh, encapsulation of what happened at the Mid-States region of the Astronomical League last month in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, there were a couple of the speakers that I really had, uh, I found really interesting and they had some really good uh, information. Um, the first one was Don Fiken from the St. Louis Astronomical Society. Don, he's, he's one of these fire plugs that you know you wish you had one in every club because he just makes everything go. He gets everything going and he has just been setting St. Louis on fire. 
was talking to John about this last night. The, a club in New Hampshire started this telescope library loan program. Telescope loan program. And what they do is they have, they are uh, Orion Star Blast, four and a half inch tabletop Newtonian. And what they do is they get a variable eyepiece, they glue it into place, they have all the caps and all the accessories are tied onto the telescope, and then they hot glue the knots so people can't steal any of the accessories. Um, is they have placed in, in the first year and a half of this program, they have placed 105 of these telescopes in libraries around the St. Louis area. Um, check out is typically like a book, it's about seven days for the telescopes. Uh, and right now they have a waiting period of almost two years. So the telescopes are, you know, people have found out about these telescopes, and he says that the uh, damage to the telescopes is minimal. You know, people are not looking at, you know, going and finding, you know, how can I steal a red dot finder off of a little tiny uh, four and a half inch Newtonian. So, so they're doing, uh, they're having really low incidence of needing to go back and uh, repair things or replace a lot of stuff on the telescopes. Uh, the other thing that I found is we were talking about the 2017 eclipse, and part of St. Louis is in totality, and part of it is not in totality. So he's talking about uh, they're anticipating a massive short-range migration <laughs> across the city, and, and you start thinking about this, and this is something that I hadn't thought about, especially because you know I'm going out to see my friend out in Grand Island, and then we're going to figure out where we're going to go. You know, it, it, it's, it's pretty sparsely populated. But when you get into towns that are in the center line or just off the center line, and you know, and you're talking about St. Louis, which has two and a half million people in there, you know, you're going to overwhelm some facilities. You know, the roads potentially could be jammed. You know, there could be all kinds of. How do you feed? You know, half a million, a million people who are on the move. You know, even if it's just across the city. Uh, so they were trying to, uh, they're having a lot of problems trying to convince city and county officials of the uh, potential crunch that might happen. Everybody said, oh, well, it's just a um, So they're not really thinking very far ahead as far as things will happen. Uh, the other number that, that Don said uh, that really was pretty impressive to me is so far they have purchased 35,000 Solar viewing glasses, and uh, they are not done purchasing them. They are, they are anticipating they're going to be buying a whole lot more. Are they giving them away? I don't think so. I think they're going to be selling them, and, and that will be you know, a huge money maker for those clubs down there. Uh, the next one I thought I heard was David Young from the uh, Astronomical Society of Kansas City, who was talking about the Cape program. Uh, and, and that was really interesting, uh, you know, and, and Bob went over most of all that stuff, so I'm not going to go uh, through that. Uh, when I was down there, you know, he said that we have 11 sites across Nebraska, which is more than, I think, any other state. Uh, and it, at that point, I think only one had been taken, so it's interesting to hear that another, by what, about seven or so now total? Well, she just gave me, I think she just gave me the locations between here and Grand Island. Okay. I don't know that she gave me any locations past Grand Island. Okay. But I thought that was really interesting. Uh, there was Dr. Angela Speck, who is the Astronomy Department Chair for the University of Missouri. Uh, she was our keynote speaker. And she also talked about the repercussions of having Columbia and the University of Missouri near the center line. She anticipates the population of Columbia going from about 100,000 to about 400,000 people. And again, you know, you get that kind of a crunch because anybody who's in, you know, within about a 50 or 60 mile range of Columbia or even a couple hundred miles, if they're going to just go someplace, they're going to go to a city, you know, that's going to be right near the center line. And, and, and do something like that, especially if they're going to start advertising that they're going to have stuff. 
Um, the problems that they had uh, is that Monday happens to be the first day of the semester for the university. <laughs> so she is trying very hard to get the school officials to cancel that day of school because there will be a lot of people around noon who are deciding, I'm not going to go to my class. Uh, I'm going to go watch this once in a lifetime type thing. Uh, she also said that she wants to open Farrow Field, their football stadium. And, you know, you got a place that can already accommodate 50 or 60,000 people. You put people on the ground, you can have 100,000 people in that field. Uh, so, and, and of course, the university officials are very reluctant to hear anything about something that's, you know, still over a year away. So there are a, a lot of challenges for her. And then finally, uh, Scott Roberts from Explore Scientific was there, and he was talking about development of new eyepieces. And he has a new 120 degree field of view, apparent field of view eyepiece. And he was he was talking about uh, you know dealing with the people over in China who are making these, and they're making some very good quality optics. However, to get to an eyepiece like that, it went through six generations of development. So you know, the guy does all the drawings and grinding glass, they put all the coatings on it, and we saw uh, there it is. Well, this isn't what I need. I need to do this. We'll have the drawing board. They do all that stuff over, and then they come out with a second generation prototype. So Scott gets it, takes a look at it, uses it, sees what everything happens, you know, says, well, this is good, but it's not quite there. So he has a company who did this six times before they came up with an eyepiece that was really, in his mind, a usable eyepiece. So uh, it was really interesting to hear him talking about you know, the uh, advancements in, in optics and, you know, multi-coding uh, on all of the surfaces and on all the stuff that goes into making an eyepiece like that. So those are the general uh, themes of the speakers that I have down there. Of course, it's always one of those things. I've been going down to some of these things for years, and it's a lot of fun. You know, I, I've developed a lot of friends down there, so, you know, I walk in for registration. Hey, I think that's still fun. Okay, great. And you know, you're sitting and talking to people, you have dinner with us. And I actually sat down with Don at dinner, you know, didn't know who he was at first when we started talking, you know, and it's it's great. He started meeting these new people and uh, I have a copy of his he sent me a copy of his uh, PowerPoint presentation. I gave a copy of it to John. I wanted to have him see that uh, telescope loan program. I thought he'd be pretty interested in that. If you want to get a copy of that, it's only about 11 megabytes. So you know, if you want to give me your uh, email address, I can email it out to you. Is, is that the Astronomical Leagues no, um, library is, loan program? No, no. This is this was developed by a group in New Hampshire. Right. And right. I, and I don't the, know. The AL Telescope Loan Program is based on that. Do they have? I if you know go, they had something like if that. You, Oh yeah! If you go to the Astronomical League webpage, uh -huh. the home page, and scroll down the right-hand side on the links, you'll—they're alphabetical, and one of them okay. is Library Loan Program. Cool. Okay, cool, very good. And they last year and, and this year, you can apply to—they're giving ten of them away uh -huh. to clubs uh, um, to to donate to their local libraries. Okay, very good, very good. Any questions about any of them? Like I said, it, it, and next year uh, they haven't gotten anybody lined up to take this uh, on. I got a, I was talking to Kara Orge, who's from Kansas City, who was throwing this together and was previously a president of the Astronomical League. And he said somebody from the Omaha Council on Tourism called him to see if his group was going to be doing anything in the Omaha area, and he thought. Hey, the Omaha Astronomical Society is getting ready to throw another convention. That's great. And he asked me about that, and I said, no, no, we're not. Not yet. So uh, that was a good time. It was just a lot of fun. And it's, uh, it's always good to go down and see other people who are from around the region who are interested in astronomy and get to know all these people. And I know like I said, it was just a lot of fun. Um, so we are getting ready to take our break. Uh, let's see, I need to do more business than you.
How much time do you need before? Five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes is not very long. Okay, our next meeting will be August 12, 2016. We voted on that uh, earlier in the year. We're going to take a short break. Uh, what do you, how long is your program on? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Well, we'll start at 9 o'clock. That sounds good. We have a 15 minute break. Okay. In that case, I would ask for a motion to adjourn the business meeting. Done. Um. Can I go to second? Uh, I have a motion and a second to adjourn the business meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. That motion carries. Thank you. We will take a 15 minute break and start the program at 9 o'clock. It's rich in Adam, but it looks great. <laughs>